So Mari Stoudemire has sat down with Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes on their show, All the Smoke. And I definitely recommend you guys to check it out. But he reflected on his time in New York City as his arrival brought back an exciting brand of basketball to the city. A lot of ball movement was happening, especially in that Mike D'Antoni system. And of course, Amari Stoudemire is a high flyer. And he actually brought stardom to the city, which in years prior, we were lacking. You guys check it out. And every once in a while, check in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, when I when I when free agency hit, it was like it's a big free agency that year. You know what I'm saying? Everyone was there. LeBron, everybody was like free agency that year. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Miami Heat was the first thing that called me. Pat called me. We talked on the phone. I talked to the Rockets. I talked to the Nets at the time, the Jersey Nets at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I talked to I talked to the few teams and, I, and the Knicks. And so I spent a lot of time in New York in my child years. I was raised in Port Jervis, New York. And so I was always like, you know what I'm saying? I always like had a love for New York. Even though I was a Bulls fan, my, I was an MJ fan growing up, but still I had love for the Knicks in, in, in New York growing up. So when 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 Mike D'Antoni was there in New York and, and some of the coaching staff that I was with here in Phoenix was already there, I'm like, this might be a, a nice fit for me to just go there and kind of pick up where I left off. And so that's when I, that's when I decided to go to New York and, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I wanted to bring some guys with me. I talked about bringing CP. I talked about bringing Tony Parker. I talked about bringing Melo. You know what I'm saying? I, I ended up bringing Melo to New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was already on that, like, bringing players in to the city to make things happen here. Um, you know, so that was the whole mission. What was it like becoming a Nick, though? Like, what was that experience like? Like, what, like, a lot of people want to play in the Garden. A lot of people want to play for the Knicks. Just that experience of playing in the Madison Square Garden is one thing being there, watching the game, watching Spike and all of them. But actually being a player for the New York Knicks, one of the best players coming out of that locker room every day, dealing with the media and all that. What is it like actually being a New York Knicks player? No, I enjoyed it, man. I, I really did. I, I think at that time, the front office was, like, on point. We had, we had, we had, we had, you know, solid GMs. We had Donny Walsh there. We had Glenn Gould. We had, you know, Donny Walsh doing a heck of a job. And Donnie Walsh is definitely one of the more solid GMs that the Knicks have had in a long time. And Donnie Walsh was definitely one of the more solid GMs that the Knicks had in years. He put together a well-running machine, especially around Mike D'Antoni, players that could fit within that system of just a lot of ball movement. We had Gallinari as a nice three-point shooting threat. Mario Stoudemire in the middle to attack the paint. Definitely one of the more solid GMs that the Knicks have had. The only mistake I would say within those years is using that amnesty clause on Chauncey Billups, which we all know, Amari Stoudemire, looking back, his knees definitely had a timetable of how they were going to hold up. If you look at the final results of Amari Stoudemire's years within the Knicks, the first year he was amazing, made the all-star team. But every year after that, his points per game, his minutes per game went down and how many games played, it all went downhill from there. And that was to be expected. But the Knicks at the time, they were protected by that amnesty clause until they used it on Chauncey Billups in order to sign Tyson Chandler. Um, That's my guy. You know, he was doing a heck of a job in New York. and Everything was running perfectly from an organization standpoint. And then so when I was there with the Knicks, it was like, you know, um, everything is top notch. Everything. You got the Rockettes performing at halftime. You got you got Taylor Swift doing a pregame, like a pregame uh, uh, um, intro for the Knicks. My family meeting there, their favorite artist. Everything was ran class A. You got Broadway shows. I was going to the Met Gallas in fashion. I was one of the first guys to go to the fashion shows and sit, you know what I'm saying, sit front row with Anna and Wintour. I was going to the to the operas. You know? Yes, a lot of that stuff that the NBA players love doing nowadays. Amari is definitely was doing that way before. And this was when social media, especially Instagram, was starting to come about. Amari Stoudemire was really doing half the things that the players were doing, going to all these high-end fashion shows, especially the Met Gala. All these things were full in effect for Knicks stars already. Once again, playing for the Knicks right now is basically an untapped gem that a lot of players, especially due to all the negativity from the media, they're overlooking. I put on the tuxedo and go to the opera. Any, you know what I'm saying? Like I was doing all that New York. Yeah, some grown man shit. I love, I love hearing about the off court because although it wasn't yeah. a championship type team, it's still you guys made the playoffs, obviously, but it's still New York. You know, similar to LA. Like there's yep. no experience like being a Laker, but then that experience like being the Knicks is right there. 
You know what I mean? Because right. New York is obviously live, so it's dope to hear like all the shit off the court that came with it because you guys are doing your job on the court. And the off the court stuff, the players, a lot of these players, man, that bite into this media hype of the Knicks not being a destination, they don't understand. Maybe if they're playing for these other teams, maybe like buying a nice luxury car, but playing for the Knicks is like sitting in the back of a Maybach while the driver drives you. It's a totally different experience. Yeah, nobody was doing that. I'm like, listen, man. I'm like, <laughs> right. no, Let me nobody show you. live in the city? I'm yeah. like, don't know. Everyone's, no, out, no in white, everyone's out in White Plain. White Plain. Yeah, everyone's out in like, White Plain. Wait, that shit's hard as hell. Man. <laughs> man, listen, I found me a penthouse in the city. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm going to enjoy New York and also yeah, hold myself yeah. accountable to being the player I need to be. To... Yeah, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> I seen Amari Stoudemire saying nobody live in the city. It's crazy how Melo's making all that money, but I seen a video of him bitching about paying all that rent for a, a penthouse in the city. He was paying about $18,000 a month when he first arrived on the team, and he was not happy about that shit. This team a playoff team, you know what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, it, it was definitely a vibe. Mm-hmm. So despite a big season, you guys uh, go down to Boston uh, and come across an injury in 2012. And after that, it never really seemed like you were, no one's really paying for you, but you were injury ridden uh, the rest of your time. And, and just quickly touching base on that Boston series, that series was pretty much peak mellow with Amari Sotomayor together. That's the most we got both of them at their peak because that series, if we just paid a bit more attention to small details in that series, it could have been a lot closer than what it was. But that was beautiful to see the Knicks' potential in that series of what they could be had Amari Stoudemire stayed healthy. Yeah, I was struggling, man. I I, I had a, uh, I was uh, after like the like third year, started having like, a, you know, some, some minor little injuries that would add up. And I was trying to get myself together, but I couldn't find the right proper technique with the training, with the training situation. And so uh, I was having some knit that situation, like going through that whole process. And I couldn't really get it figured out. And so for like two and a half years, I was ridden with like little, small little injuries that was affecting me. But I also felt positive about it because, you know, bringing in Melo, Melo was able to somewhat carry the load, even though it was tough for him to be by himself. But he was still able to carry the load and try to do what he could to make sure the team was still being successful. Uh, while his big dog was still trying to get himself together. So, you know, it was definitely a tough stretch there in the last two two years or so. And Amari Stoudemire, best believe, he did all he could to get back on the court. That guy is fully dedicated. I mean, he had that season, I believe it was in 2013 or 2014, 15, where he was just playing really effective from bench because his minutes were limited. But best believe, he reminds me of Grant Hill, a guy that went through hell from surgeries and just dealing with a bunch of injuries but fought through it and still ended up playing solid minutes for a team and having a solid career. And Amari Sotomayor also spoke about that famous red wine bath photo, how that came about. Hey, listen, man. I was, man, I, I was, I was, uh, you know, this, this, this female friend I was, I was, um, you know, talking with, she gave me a gift. Right, and she gave me a gift, and, and the gift was go to this ancient bath place. And you go in there, it's like um, it's like very romantic. You have like the hot tub. You got a, Send me the Addy. You got the salt <laughs> bath. You got the cold plunge. You got all this, and then the gift for me was like to take this wine bath. I'm like a wine bath. What's like, a wine bath for? So I go in there. You know what I'm saying? Take the wine, get it, I get into the bath. It's like half wine, half water. It's like 98 degrees, 100 degrees in the bath. They bring you. That shit sound like some blood sacrifice shit. God damn. It's water, and also they bring you a glass of wine. Just relax. And so I was doing it, man. I took a little selfie shot, and it went viral. You know what I'm saying? Once again, and at that time, Instagram was just a bubbling small app, and it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when Amari Sotomayor joined the Knicks was pretty much the beginning of all that. So players started to see how stars that played for New York were living. Yeah, anytime I had a day off, I'd go there and hit all the, all the baths, right? The salt bath, which has good body rejuvenation, cold plunge, contrast between cold and hot. 
you know what I'm saying? I jump in the wine bath. It was like a nice little day of recovery for me. So that's what I was doing. So Mari Stoudemire was also asked, how much does that wine bath cost? Check, baby. You got to cut the check. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So how much would a wine, <laughs> how much would a, how much would a wine bath yeah. cost? I, I need to know. I'm a port, I'm a port drinker, my Amari. Yeah. Stat, stat, I love drinking ports. That's my thing, ports. I love ports. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. I used to on a cab, I think I, I, I wanted to know, what was your most expensive wine bath? Most expensive wine bath? Yeah. Man. Got to add some zeros to that. Yeah, because you a big, you, <laughs> hey, you, you a big, you big motherfucker, so it's going to take a lot of bottles. Hey, facts, I'm telling you. Uh, actually, you know what, the bath, the tub sits for people, so it's like a big, I've seen big, it. Big, yeah, I've seen yeah. the thing you did on ESPN, yeah, so that was big yeah. as shit. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine how much that wine bath costs, but it is what it is. Once again, Amari Sotomay definitely bought a brand of exciting basketball back to the city and gave hope, you know, to the city because it was a while since we had a legit star in the league on the team.